Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have the Hindu analysis of 15th March 2021. So let us see which are the important articles in today's The Hindu newspaper. Yes, these are the important articles from today's The Hindu newspaper. For men's purpose and for prince purpose, we have segregated them. You can see uh, these are the men's related articles on editorial and op-ed page. Let us take overview of first of all these articles. First article, Summit Spirit. Recently, the virtual uh, quad summit has been uh, conducted and the article is discussing the outcome of that virtual summit, quad summit, quadrilateral security dialogue summit and uh, the, the significance of that outcome at the same time the concerns associated with uh, that quadrilateral grouping. Okay, so this is the significance from international relations GS2 paper mains examination. Then we have second article, Forestalling a Cyber Pearl Harbor. Very good article related to cyber security, GS3 paper. It is talking about or having the context of uh, a recent revelation by US based one, uh, uh, let's say, organization revealing that there has been cyber attacks on Indian energy, uh, India's energy sector, okay, or institute or organizations. So here it is discussing about the threat that is posed by such Chinese cyber attacks on India. Okay, so third one is future force for future wars. So from security perspective, GS3 paper again, if we are talking about the kind of changing warfare nature, or uh, we, we can understand that the cyber security or the cyber warfare and the space warfare, the nature of warfare is continuously changing, evolving in recent times. So what is that? So we are going to look into this and yes, as a way forward, what we should do to tackle such kind of warfare or deal with such warfare. For specifically prelims examination, we have center likely to allow residents to fill their NPR details online. From polity and governance perspective, here the follow up for NPR, National Population Register. Now the government is going to allow to fill that details of people in online mode okay so what is NPR for we have to understand the basics national population register and uh, yes what is the legal backing to NPR actually in 2019 it was in very much news because of NRC and CAA citizenship amendment act and therefore now again it is in news because of such developments so again basics we have to re revise and from contemporary issues this is important then right to dissent is central says uh, P. Sainath. So P. Sainath, uh, the uh, veteran journalist we can say that and he has given the dissent note in one of the report of the government agencies and it is talking about right to dissent is central. So what is this, uh, what is this body and what kind of objective it is having regarding world pre uh, press freedom index okay so uh, we'll talk about that uh, world press freedom index also which body gives that index what is india's ranking in 2020 index so reports and indices every year one or two questions are being asked in prelims then we'll uh, have the third center reconstitute panel on mythical saraswati river so here it is talking about uh, mythical saraswati river okay so here <coughs> The center has recently reconstituted the committee. Earlier, uh, the, in 2017, the committee was formed by ASI, Archaeological Survey of India. So it is now reconstituted after expiry of its two-year term. We'll go into details of all these articles now as we have understood the context and from which module of our examination, which paper of our examination, uh, the question can be asked and inputs to be taken from these articles. First article on page number 8, editorial page, summit <coughs> spirit. Okay, so the context as I have earlier highlighted that the context is virtual quad summit, quadrilateral security dialogue. Quad means quadrilateral security dialogue. Now here we will discuss the significance, the outcome, significance and concerns associated with this quad. Okay, what is the outcome of this virtual summit that was hosted by US? And we know the basics about quad, which are these four countries 
in the quad four countries we can draw like this in mains examination if you are having the quadrilateral related uh, quad related question you can draw like this india us australia and japan it looks like quadrilateral right so yes surely basically these are the four important democracies across asia pacific region that's why uh, uh, the app name is quadrilateral okay so yes uh, now we are going to understand the outcome of this summit now outcome is revolving around the three important headings here first is the vaccine initiative now vaccine in initiative if you are talking about the details of this is that we are or these four countries are going to produce <clears throat> 1 billion vaccine doses in india by the end of 2022 by the end of 2022 1 billion doses of vaccine now all these four countries are going to cooperate with each other for this initiative how you can see here first thing they will be made in india so india's manufacturing facilities and its pharmaceutical prowess will be used here okay that kind of infrastructure that we have uh, in pharmaceutical industry we are going to use here second aspect is the technological development of us so us technology is to be used for such production third is that <coughs> The funding is to be done by Japan. Funding is to be done by Japan. And fourth, the network, distribution network intervention is to be done by Australia. Distribution network and management is to be done by Australia. Now, this is how the four countries are cooperating in this first initiative, vaccine initiative. One billion doses to be manufactured in India with the help of US technology funded by Japan and the distribution tech, uh, network is to be managed by Australia by the end of 2022. Now, there will be some collaborative groups in two areas. First is climate change and second is cooperation on critical technologies. Okay, now what are these critical technologies? Uh, some of the important here examples, let me give you examples, 5G technology, biotechnology or such kind of technologies which are having significant impact or having significant impact on, on the future, we can say that and on that they are going to cooperate with each other or four countries and climate change yes surely uh, they are going to cooperate now we have to understand after understanding this outcome the significance of this outcome or this summit first thing you need to know that if you are talking about the uh, strategic aspect okay now how do we understand the strategy aspect now us uh, has recently undergone into the elections presidential elections and new uh, president wants to uh, bring the america back on the world stage as a global leader and quadrilateral grouping is the apt platform for such uh, we can say that uh, in, uh, initiative or such let's say objective of the us a new government in the US. Second aspect we have to understand that Australia and Japan are somehow having in uh, the conflicts with China and therefore they need some cooperation with Australia, uh, sorry not Australia, US as well as India and the quad grouping is going to help them. Third aspect for India. Now for India, yes surely last one year we have seen the uh, tensions between India and China along LAC and uh, yes recently they are uh, somehow reducing however to let's say further deter China we need to have such kind of backing by these developed countries like US, Australia, Japan which may provide in future some of the cooperation coordination uh, so as to have any kind of or so as to not have any kind of provocation by China in future. Yes. Now, after understanding this significance from each country level, we can understand some concerns associated. Concerns or we can say limitations, if you are talking about limitations of quad. What are these limitations of quad? 
uh, from US perspective, US is not directly confronting China. Rather, at present, the US is exploring how to deal with China. It has not adopted any uh, strong stand or path to deal with China. Okay, so we can understand Quad is one of the, let's say, trial and error kind of uh, method that US is adopting. So we should not be always sure that Quad is going to uh, further progress as an anti-China grouping. Next, we have to understand is from Australia and Japan perspective. How do we understand that? From Australia and Japan perspective, we have to understand they are in the same trade grouping that has been recently, uh, let's say, concluded and that is RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, ASEAN countries plus five. Okay, so this RCEP grouping of 15 countries includes China as well as Australia and Japan and therefore they have to be cooperative with China. So yes, they cannot get involved more in we can say quad grouping as an anti-China grouping. And third thing we have to understand that from India's perspective, India also cannot continuously provoke China. Uh, by militarizing or taking some kind of military backing, military help from quad grouping. Otherwise, China will uh, uh, consider or label, already it has labeled uh, this quad grouping as anti-China military group. However, uh, yes, India has uh, recently, the Prime Minister of India in this virtual summit has said that quad grouping should be used for global peace and progress and not for military purpose and this should be the ultimate objective and not to provoke china we can understand okay so these are the limitations of quad grouping and yes surely uh, what kind of question this year's men's examination gs2 paper that question appeared i will uh, read that to you Quadrilateral security dialogue is transforming itself into trade block from the military alliance in present times. Discuss. Now, yes, we have to discuss this. You can understand that it is converting into trade block. How do we understand that? You can see here the developments. Developments in terms of economic cooperation, trade relations. They are growing between these four countries or uh, at the four country level, quad grouping level uh, from the military alliance. Earlier we can understand that the idea of quad grouping that was put forward was to some extent, to some extent informally considered as anti-China or military grouping. Okay, so yes, surely we have to understand that uh, as it is discussed, you can also mention that yes, but however it is still to some extent the military focus is on military or such kind of cooperation you can give the example of malabar exercise now in 2020 when the malabar exercise was conducted we have included australia in it earlier it was tri nation uh, naval uh, we can say <coughs> tri nation exercise naval exercise now Australia was also included now from now onwards. Now it is the quad exercise completely, right? So such kind of uh, inputs can be mentioned when the command is discussed. Okay, so from both perspective, you give the arguments here and then you can uh, give any conclusion and conclusion can be like recently how our prime minister has said that such kind of quad grouping should not be militarized rather it should be used for global peace and progress right yes so from gs2 paper ir perspective moving on to next article for stalling a cyber per harbor now <clears throat> the article that is written by former national security advisor here he is specifically emphasizing or having uh, writing this article with the context that recently this particular recorded future organization of US has revealed recorded future has revealed that there have been cyber attacks on Indian power sector in 2020 and surely India's power ministry has also said that there had been attacked however no information or data has been leaked or uh, let's say lost or no damage has been done. 
Now we have to take this very serious but before going into details we have to understand what kind of group or the name of the group and what kind of mal malware was used for film's perspective. So what is that Red Echo? This is China linked activity group or cyber group we can say that. So it is actually active all over the world. This is China backed or China linked Red Echo and what kind of malware it has used? You need to remember this name shadow pad. Now this is network intrusion malware. How it works? This network intrusion malware, it works or it creates a backdoor path. Backdoor path means it links that particular affected system, electronic system with the command and control server. Now once that path is created, there can be any, let's say, extraction of information from infected system. Okay, so this backdoor path creation by this malware is very harmful. Backdoor Trojan, we can say that this is, uh, the name is shadow path. Okay, so there can be question in prelims examination. Shadow path, sometimes recently in, in news, was seen in news related to which of the following. So it can be talking about the virus uh, or we can say uh, what kind of virus or we can say malware also. So you need to know that it is malware, okay, shadow pad, fine. Now we have to understand that this shadow pad or we can say that this particular malware is linked to Chinese army as well as Chinese government, okay. And that's why the threats here we are talking about the cyber warfare. Now what are cyber attacks and cyber warfare? There is a difference between two. Cyber warfare is state sponsored. State sponsored. That means it is backed or directly acted by the government. Okay, so cyber warfare and cyber attacks can be by the non-state actors. Okay, so we have to understand the basic difference in terminology, cyber warfare. So we can understand that this kind of attacks are part of cyber warfare or cyber tactics they are played by China in recent times. Now cyber warfare is contactless warfare or next generation warfare, hybrid part of hybrid warfare. And uh, yes, the writer is emphasizing that India needs to be prepared for such kind of attacks. Yes, the past attack, it is giving the example how uh, the Ukraine's power greed failed in 2016 by systematic cyber attack that was carried out on the power greed of Ukraine in 2016, how it affected that country. Similar kind of incident could have happened in India after these attacks. Okay, so that's why we need to be prepared. Prepared for what? prepared to protect our critical infrastructure. Now what is critical infrastructure? Yes, now this year also they have asked in prelims examination critical infrastructure the, is related to which of the following. So yes, you need to know the meaning of certain cyber related uh, terminologies. So cyber, uh, sorry, critical infrastructure is that infrastructure which is very important. Uh, we can say part of the country, uh, part of infrastructure of the country and has the cascading impact on the overall, uh, uh, let's say, economy, Indian economy as well as polity. Now it includes, let's say, government departments, ministries and the kind of let's say hardware or the systems electronic systems are there or data is protected in those system data protection we can understand here the the power plants and the nuclear power plants defense establishments or we can say PSUs public sector undertakings all these are parts of critical infrastructure Right. And when they are attacked or compromised, the overall security of the nation is compromised. Okay. It, it, it also includes the banking sector. Right. So you need to know what constitutes this critical infrastructure and this should be protected. Right. 
so yes the article is emphasizing that we need to have or uh, prepare ourselves for tackling this cyber warfare that is uh, started by china last year or we can say overall there has been such kind of cyber warfare we can take example of us and russia there is continuous cyber warfare however that is not explicit okay that is not uh, uh, or that is never uh, we can say that accepted by any of the government that is implicit okay so here china is also adopting such kind of tactics which can be this is visible from the chinese defense budget this year amounting to 209 billion dollar gives special weightage to this strategic support forces ssf now this ssf strategic support forces uh, embraces cyber warfare from this we can understand that china gives special emphasis to cyber warfare okay so from this we can understand uh, from prelims perspective this is the information and overall as an example why uh, we should be well prepared for cyber security threats or cyber warfare states sponsored cyber warfare and then cyber attacks by non state actors gs3 paper internal security cyber security part fine okay now moving on to next article future force for future wars now from this article we need to take some keywords not whole article is important rather uh, recently prime minister was addressing the defense establishment and uh, in gujarat and yes uh, he has emphasized that there should be a reduced gap between civilian and military establishments uh, they should be shedding all the legacies they are carrying here we can say armed forces and there should not be any kind of conflict between armed forces and civilian leadership here okay so yes <coughs> the kind of warfare what do you mean by war the article is providing that war at its core is organized violence waged for political purposes you can use this as an uh, let's say statement whenever if you are talking about the gs4 paper suppose there is uh, talking about war ethics question is talking about war ethics definition of war simply you can use it you can note this down in your notes or any paper or essay paper also then yes the article in initial part is providing that how traditional warfare was very much predictable predictable on the lines like yes we always knew that who is our enemy we always knew that whether we are at the state of war or not right and such kind of let's say level of or characteristics of war uh, was dependent on the kind of society that we have in that country the kind of uh, let's say progress that country is doing economically and technologically right so yes this is the kind of let's say traditional warfare however the warfare or nature of warfare is changing now it is becoming more and more hybrid it is becoming hyper compound non linear fourth generation warfare or if you are talking about the contactless warfare or next generation warfare like we can see here cyber security or cyber warfare contactless warfare right so yeah, uh, if you are talking about next generation next generation cyber warfare space warfare all these are next generation warfares right hybrid warfare hybrid warfare is combination of cyber warfare as well as if you are talking about the the combination of actual warfare on the ground yes that is called as hybrid compound warfare right so these words are important here now as a way forward to tackle such kind of situation that our prime minister has said in that speech one thing is that breaking down civil military silos on and on expediting speed of decision making right so two important aspect breaking down the silos that means the compartmentalization should be uh, removed here and there should be more and more cooperation between civil and military leadership so as to have so increased speed of decision making efficient decision making will happen after removing such kind of distinction or we can say distance between these two next aspect we have to understand is 
the military should be more and more adaptive to the new kind of technologies that means develop the military into future force while taking note of rapidly changing technological landscape right so this is very important unless and until we adopt the new technology that uh, that is evolving throughout the world we will not be able to effectively deal such kind of threats evolving threats right so therefore these two important points can be written here fine so take inputs for gs3 paper security part now if you are talking about prelims related articles yes now the ministry of home affairs has said that uh, there will be or central will allow the residents to fill the npr form on online mode right or digital mode okay on on their own through the online mode right now we have to understand from basics part what is npr how it is different from nrc how it is different from census what is the significance of npr national population register okay so yes from that part we will understand now the following information here now npr is uh, we can say the the basic data of any individual or resident of india the the register of usual residents of the country now what is usual resident this typical word is used for uh, we can say under the our these rules and law it is saying that this usual resident is that person who is residing for last 6 months in particular local area okay it is not talking about whether he is or she is citizen or not of the country it is only talking about residing in that local area or if or she, uh, he or she intends to reside for next 6 months both are we can say here usual residents now uh, uh, the the kind of information that is collected here has the legal backing legal backing from citizenship i mean uh, uh, sorry citizenship act 1955 and the rules uh, notified under this law in 2003 this is the legal backing for this npr so oh, there can be surely question that which of the following law is having or we can say that npr is conducted under which of the following fine now who conducts this npr or maintains this npr right registrar general and ex officio census commissioner of india registrar general and ex officio census commissioner of india so this body or this office conducts this npr fine now what how it is different from census so basic difference you have to understand that decennial census that is conducted after every 10 years now this 2021 year is due for next census is to be conducted the basic difference here is that census is having the wide information of that particular person as well as household okay however npr is having only limited demographic information it is having only limited demographic information of that person so this is the basic difference npr and census census is very wide activity it includes like electricity whether the household has electricity connection whether the household has uh, uh, dts connection or television whether it has mobile phone internet connection all this information is collected in this uh, census data and that is useful for overall policy formulation throughout that 10 years further it acts as a input for the government as well as the analysts now we have to understand the significance of npr significance of npr is that uh, this is specifically going to be used for targeted dedicated implementation of the government schemes government schemes like ayushman bharat is there or if you are talking about the other schemes like jan dhan yojana is there right so all these schemes will be efficiently effectively implemented when the government is having demographic data and this npr will provide that now what is the difference between npr and nrc nrc many a times it is in use uh, recently now yes assam is going to have the assembly elections and because of that yes nrc many a times comes in use national registration uh, register of citizens now this national register of citizens nrc is also having legal backing under that law 
and we have to understand that this NRC requires or it is specifically related or talking about the citizenship of the person. It is for verification of that, uh, let us say, or verification of citizenship of the individual. Here, NPR is not talking about whether the person is citizen of the country or not. Fine. So, this is the basic uh, information you need to know, the basic difference between NPR and NRC. Right. So, NPR does not require any document proof. Rather, it is we are going to have the voluntary activity. We are ourselves going to provide the data to the government. Right. However, NRC requires the document proof for citizenship variability, uh, verifiability. Right. So, this is the basic information about NPR, NRC and yes, uh, significance of NPR, how it is different, uh, different from census. Right. So, uh, take input for prelims as well as mains GS2 paper. There can be let us say question like this, frame like this for practice purpose. Let us try to solve such kind of question. First statement you can see here, the national population register is database of people living in India while national register of citizens is database of Indian citizens. Now, such kind of confusing statements will be there in the examination. So, just now we talked about that, yes, it is data of people living in India, not Indian citizens and NRC is talking about Indian citizens. So, this is correct statement. While census only contains demographic information, more details are required for NPR. So, just now we talked about this is completely opposite. Here it should be NPR. NPR requires only demographic information. However, the census requires much more information as compared to NPR. Third statement, now this is incorrect. NRC process demands proof of citizenship while NPR does not require any document. Yes, surely NRC is talking about the citizenship and therefore it requires the document while NPR A does not require document. So, 1 and 3 is the answer. This is how you should attend such kind of question. Surely there can be uh, a tricky or let us say confusing statements in examination like this. Fine? Yes. Right to dissent is central, says Sainath. So, P. Sainath, journalist and the member of this <coughs> index monetary cell or the report, he has given the dissenting note on this report. Index monetary cell. What is this index monetary cell? It is set up by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. And this has been set up with the objective to improve India's ranking in World Press Freedom Index. Okay. So, index monitoring cell, you need to remember this. Now, what is this World Freedom uh, Press Freedom Index and uh, the kind of 2020 ranking it had, India's ranking? So, yes, it is uh, released by this organization, Reporters Without Border. Now, this Reporters Without Border is non-profit organization uh, based in Paris, France. Okay. Now, India's rank dropped 142, two points below its 2019 rank. Okay. And index ranks 180 countries and <coughs> regions according to level of freedom available to journalists. Okay, it is specifically talking about the freedom available to journalists. Right, so 142 is India's ranking in 2020, 2020 and in 2019 it was 140. Fine. See, yes, three things important name of the organization, location, and then India's ranking. Fine. Okay. So, this was from prelims perspective inputs. Then we have lastly, Center Reconstitute Panel on Mythical Saraswati River. Now, we all know that the Triveni Sangam in our Vedic literature, it is it has been said that uh, Saraswati, Ganga, Yamuna uh, had the, uh, let us say, uh, confluence at Triveni Sangam in the, uh, let us say, ancient India and later on this uh, Saraswati River uh, was, uh, let us say, <coughs> uh, what we can say, was Dis, disappeared right and yes many such proofs are available the dry bed of the river is still there in many courses and therefore such panel by archaeological survey of india in 2017 for the first time a committee was established for a period of two years for much research 
uh, more research on such uh, on Saraswati River. Fine. So now in 2019, this term of the committee ended, and now this is uh, reconstru being reconstituted by the government uh, advisory committee to chuck out the plan for studying the mythical Saraswati River. So from mis miscellaneous part, you need to know about no uh, let's say about the government committees and panels so this is for a uh, saraswati river fine okay so these are the important articles from today's the hindu newspaper agar aapko ye video pasand aaya ho to isko like kijiye share kijiye aur aapka feedback hame comment box mein bataiye sath hi sath hamare channel ko subscribe kijiye for further information on editorial discussion classes or ed classes wherein in-depth analysis of men's related issues and articles is done by Ansari Sir and team, you can contact Lukman IS. Thank you.